Hi, welcome to Edge CG. My name is Daniel Weiss and today we're gonna cover how to create this stylized character bust. I started with a simple base mesh and worked my way up to the final result you can see right here. So let's get into it. As I said before, when I usually start, I start with a simple base mesh. Uh, this is a specific base mesh I got online from a character modeler called uh, Zebro. Uh, he has an amazing blog. Uh, you should definitely check out his website. Um, uh, you can get other stuff for free as well. For example, uh, this interface uh, I'm using right here, I got uh, on his website as well. And you can get uh, custom brushes for seams for clothes and other great stuff as well, matte caps. So as you can see, um, I'm mostly using the move brush right now and I'm not too concerned about many polygons. Uh, I try to keep it actually quite, quite uh, low res in the beginning because I only care about the primary shape, which is basically the shape you would see from the distance. And this is the most important bit to me right now. So I try to create that only using the move brush, because I don't really have enough information at this point to use a clay brush or clay tubes or build up or whatever. So yeah, that, that helps me to stick just to the silhouette. And uh, for the character I was thinking of uh, bulky, muscular, a little bit aggressive kind of character. So I was thinking of uh, a boxer or a security guy. Definitely someone who, you know, you can be intimidating. I also was thinking of making him look a little bit, well, not too intelligent, I might say. So, you know, he's that. He, he's a guy who would solve issues with his fist and not probably his brain. So, I mean, all those things are very important um, guidelines for you when you create a character because you know what you can do and what you can't do. And if you have a specific guideline to your to your sculpture you can start looking up references um, for, 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 me, for my example right here I was looking up uh, sorry I don't remember his name but it was like a Russian boxer and he has a really interesting face uh, he has like a, a huge forehead and a huge cheek area so yeah this is uh, another thing um, which I can only recommend. Uh, when you when you create a character, always use references. Um, I never start sculpting without references, actually. Yeah. So right now I'm trying to um, work on the work on the ear area and and the neck area. I was thinking specifically for the ears, they should be a little bit smaller, because that gives the impression that the character itself is way bigger same for the eyes if you if you think of a of a child or like like a disney character they always have huge eyes cuz they that that that's basically what makes them so cute and what i'm doing right here is basically the opposite and right now i divided the base mesh for the first time and what i like to do while before I hit the button, make sure um, that SMT next to the divide button in the geometry palette that this is uh, switched off because um, what it usually would do is, you've probably experienced that before when you just press divide, it smooths out your whole um, base mesh you're working on um, and I and I I personally I don't like that because uh, it blurs out all the information you already created on the on the base level. Um, so my progress is basically the opposite, where I 
divided, but it still looks the same. But I know I have uh, more uh, polygons to work with. And then I use the clay tubes brush and the clay brush to to break that um, uh, that angular shape up a little bit more and trying to make it a little bit more organic. That's basically what I'm doing here right now. And while I'm doing that, um, I'm never focusing on one specific area. I'm mostly turning the object around all the time and trying to see my my sculpture from every different angle because um, that that's I don't know that that was at least my biggest mistake in the beginning when I started using ZBrush I I just started sculpting from one angle and at some point I was quite happy with the result and then I turned it around and saw it from another angle and then I realized oh, oh Oh geez, what have I done? Um, so try to keep that in mind while you're doing that. Always turn around your object. And yeah, I'm still breaking up that base mesh shape and um, trying to make l everything look a little bit smoother. And as I said before, I got that reference of that boxer online and uh he has that huge forehead and i was thinking if 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 my character has a huge forehead and like li like this this grim uh expression in his face that 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 helps a lot selling that aggressive kind of character and um i mean i'm i'm not doing a super realistic character um I'm actually doing a stylized character. Um, this so there there are definitely elements which are super extreme. You, you would never see them in real life. Uh, for this example, um, the mouth area is way bigger than than you would usually see a mouth on a on a human character, and the eyes are way more towards the middle of the face. Um, which I've only done to 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 make him a little bit less intelligent and also to make him way b bigger and I made the eye uh, the, the the mouth bigger so it gives more the impression of an ape which also helps selling that idea of a well not super intelligent character now I start working on the on the neck area, try trying to get a few landmarks for the for the neck muscles in there, because um, all those areas are important. You should never never work on one specific bit all the time. And trying to build it up slowly all together. And as you can see, I'm not doing huge changes. I'm just building up the shape slowly and slowly and slowly. Because I feel like what what I did in the beginning when I started working with ZBrush, I worked on a way too high uh, Z identity. And what, gi what that gives me is this uh, lumpy look you've probably bef seen before at ZBrush Beginner's work. Um, you know those those really really wobbly lumpy looking shapes which don't look really refined and I feel like when you when you usually use a lower uh, Z intensity I usually use uh, a Z intensity bet between 1 and 10 and that gives me the feeling of constant control over my sculpture and I'm making sure that I have everything going in the direction where I want it to be. Surely it might take a little bit longer, but I feel like the result is definitely worth it. And right now I'm trying to implement more and more anatomical features. Um, I try to um, get straight shapes. You can see it specifically on the nose tip. I use the clay tubes for getting that shape, 
that that is more the, the, I mean those shapes are probably way too angular right now but this is a landmark for me so I know uh, where shapes are interacting with each other and where which shape is coming from and going to so you you're basically making sure you have a nice flow of your anatomy and of your of your whole sculpture and I'm starting to build up all the different skin layers and fat layers which are interacting with each other uh, in, in the area between uh, the the eyes and the nose and that basically means we're not that concerned about the primary shape anymore um, but we moved on to the secondary shape which is more the finer detail inside the face for example, as I said before, the fat layers and the skin layers. Um, so I'm trying to get those right using the clay tubes. And because of this uh, square-like shape, um, the clay tubes helps me a lot getting a, a, a straight line, as you can see right here on the chin or on the mouth area. So that helps a lot setting those landmarks um, so um so I'm constantly aware of what I'm doing and where the the anatomy is going along. So I really like the area underneath the chin, those fat layers down there cuz um I like the idea um that this character is even though he is quite muscular He's not very um, uh, a, guy, a bodybuilder character, so not a guy who would go to to the gym every day, but more a guy who would, uh, yeah, you know, um, solve his issues with the with the fist <laughs> instead of using his brain. So that's why my idea was to make his skull a little bit smaller and his body a little bit bigger. So. It tells you a whole story about the character, basically. And now I'm refining the eye area and the cheek area. And as you can see, everything flows into a direction and is interacting with each other. Um, you can see how how the the wrinkles from 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 the eye from the lower eyelid um is going into the cheek area and how the cheek area goes into the mouth area and everything is connected into a way and i try to make um i try to try to be always aware of that now i try to um, get the forehead a little bit more prominent because uh, when you think of a grim character you definitely want him to look a little bit angry so that's why I'm trying to bring the, the, the eyebrows a little bit lower and make the eyes smaller And now I'm working on the the ear area. I really like the idea of uh, the ears being a little bit smaller and uh, uh, sticking out a little bit more. That I feel like gives him some character. And you can see how when when you see when you in the beginning we had this really really basic shape and we slowly build it up this organic uh, shape after the while just by using basically three brushes. I know in the beginning when you start working with ZBrush it's quite over overwhelming, especially when you're coming from a basic uh, 3D software. You have all those buttons and all those brushes and strokes and um, you're tempted to use everything and uh, being a little bit overwhelmed by that 
Um, so I only can recommend, surely play around with all the functions that, that ZBrush has to offer, but as soon as you start uh, a, a real sculpture, try to reduce the brushes you're working with. Um, as I said before, I'm mostly using for basic sculpting the the clay tubes and the clay brush and and the move brush. Another brush uh, which I like a lot is the dam standard brush. Uh, it's pretty cool for creating deep creases and wrinkles. It gives you the feeling of if you think of sculpting with actual scale, uh, clay it would have the feeling of cutting inside your clay with a knife and that's what I'm actually doing right now mostly um, getting this secondary shape right and um, may make it look way more organic so it gets the gets gives more the feeling of an actual sculpture which could come from the real world and not really uh, a CG sculpture So right now I'm building up uh, the neck area because, uh, as I said before, I want the, uh, the, the body, even though we're just working on a burst, uh, I want the body to feel very big. So just by, um, you know, making the, the, the neck area a little bit more prominent, you already get the feeling that this character must have a, a huge body. And that's another cool feature, um, the history in ZBrush. This is basically your whole process while you're sculpting and you can go back and forth between everything you've done so far. And I like to do that once in a while while I'm trying to figure out what the character looks like and go f back and forth to see the, uh, the direction I'm going to and if I like the progress. There you can see how I slowly start to to sculpt the first wrinkles. And um, now I start creating uh, the eyes. It's quite simple to be honest. You just go in the subtool palette under a pen and there you have all the basic um, uh, primitives and you can play around with those to create all the other asset, uh, assets you need for your for your character. So I use the inflate brush to create the iris that gives a nice spherical um, look to it. Um, surely this this is not an eye which uh, you would use for production we are actually doing more of a concept right now. Um, something you would show to your supervisor or to your client and um, that means it's not really about fine detail so perfect looking wrinkles and super detailed pores. It's more about the uh, the idea of selling the character and um, that's what I'm trying to do right now. So um, while I'm sculpting, it's to me it's always a back and forth process between um, building up um, a geometry and then smoothing it back a little bit. So um, it's, it's it's you it, you constantly should be aware of it that you not just should build up and build up and build up. That's where the lump lumpiness comes in. So you always make sure that you create. Uh, build up a geometry, smooth it out a little bit, and then refine it uh, with further sculpting. And now I'm focusing on the eye area, and um, the eyes are usually in character de design the most important bits. Uh, as I said before, I want to. I'm trying to give him this grim look, uh, this little bit more aggressive, maybe also a little bit confused look in his face and uh, those small eyes so he doesn't really look like a likeable character. So I 
made the, the nose a little bit smaller as well that also sells the Im impression of um, him being a little bit bigger and I'm starting to smooth out areas way more so you can see how this um, polygon like look is disappearing more and more and I'm also trying to think about the uh, uh, the, the lighting later on because um, I mean this is a matcap so you get a proper lighting out of it but if you would for example have a light coming from above um, you would get those big shadows in the in the eye area which would make him way more spooky because you can't really see the eyes and you might just see a little highlight on, on, on the iris or something like that so I feel like um, lighting and uh, shadows are also quite important while you're uh, creating your sculptures now I started working asymmetrical because um, this is, I mean, when you think about real world and uh, thinking about how it would look like when you would create uh, a sculpture in we real life which should, well, is at least my approach in this uh, sculpture you, you, there is no symmetrical function in real world so um, your your object would never look that perfect and I feel like w when you have a perfect uh, symmetrical looking uh, character or sculpture it also gives the impression of fake in a way I always feel like it looks a little bit too CG in my opinion and even if you look at faces uh, when you think of the most handsome face uh, you can imagine even those aren't perfectly symmetrical so you always want to make sure that you break up the whole um, uh, symmetry and the whole uh, shape at some point I usually do that when um, I finish the, the the base of the secondary shape so after creating the primary shape I continue with the secondary shape and then there comes the phase where all the landmarks are set and then I continue breaking up this perfect shape and that perfect uh, symmetry a little bit more. Um, as you can see I only have uh, two division levels so far but you can get a lot of information with that already so you again you don't need too, too much resolution. And I, I started posing the character already uh, to break up this symmetrical shape even further uh, by using the transpose function and I feel like the idea would be that the character would look a little bit to the side maybe looking a little bit more confused like the idea of he's maybe in a bar and about to punch someone in the face and he's not really realizing what the other person said to him right now so I want to give him this intimidating look in his face but also yeah realizing that he is probably not the smartest person in the room and right now I'm working on the on the neck area and cause he's turning his his neck you have a lot of stretching on the left hand side and a lot of shifting of fat layers on the right hand side so you can see where you have stretching on the on the one side you have all the all the muscles and all the fat layers going onto the other side so I also so my approach is always to get that feeling of realism to it even though I'm doing a kind of cartoony stylized character so right now I'm posing the eyes um, as I said before the idea is that he looks a little bit more to the side and uh, so I try to um, make that a little bit more clear with the eyes as well and um, um, as I said before the, the eyes are a very important part so uh, I try to give him a little expression on his face 
uh, not too much, but just a little bit, so you 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 can read how the char character would behave just by looking at him. And I'm still working totally asymmetrical. I feel like at some point you should do that m mostly while creating human faces. Because um, even if you would try to make him perfectly symmetrical in real world, you, you, you could never do that. And this would only be something a computer could do. And you don't want that feeling to it. Um, I'm mostly smoothing out certain areas right now. You don't want to smooth every area because you still want the information and your landmarks inside your sculpture. I'm just trying to um, polish everything a little bit more so it looks a little bit more organic. But um, yeah, it's always it's always, a, as I said before, a back and forth process between building up the geometry and smoothing it out a little bit more and then um, working over it again. Um, and you, you can basically continue working on it forever, but uh, as I said before, this is going to be a concept, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. And uh, my idea was that if he would be this uh, aggressive character who who probably had a fight in his past then it would make sense that his face would be a little bit more asymmetrical because maybe yeah uh, he uh, someone punched him in the face for example so you're constantly trying to tell a story uh, of your character with minor bits in his in his face or you know how he looks So I feel like the shape is already there um, and mostly refining and making certain areas more and more um, sticking out and um, making it also more and more asymmetrical. Try to get in uh, some more muscles on the on the on the chest area. Now I transpose him a little bit, so um, he it looks it gives the impression that he is looking downwards a little bit more, which would make sense if he is this big character. Yeah, so I'm building up the forehead area a little bit more, so it looks more that you have an actual skull underneath um, the muscle structure. I feel like all the areas are almost there, it's just about uh, smoothing them out a little bit further, but um, I'm actually quite happy with the progress so far. You can see that the shape is already there because I'm actually not changing much. It's just about, as I said, refining. Right now I'm masking uh, the area out where I later want the uh, shirt to be. And there is a great function uh, in the geometry palette. Oh no, sorry, it's in the uh, subtool palette, uh, which is extract. And you can basically create uh, another uh, geometry based on your masking. I'm 
there you go there was a little mistake on my side and um, now I'm refining the mask a little bit more and there we go extract and there you can see the new um, geometry and I'm smoothing out the shape a little bit more so it looks uh, a little bit more polished and yeah so this is an easy way to uh, create another subtool on top of another one so it's a I usually often use that for close I'm using the move uh, in transpose to give the shirt a better shape Uh, I mean this shirt is not really important for, for this character so I won't spend too much time of it but it just helps selling the idea of the character again um, if, uh, it's, it's like something different than just a simple hat and you know uh, but w with that shirt and minor information you can already tell a whole story behind that character So I won't uh, spend too much time on the shirt with, I don't know, fabric, textures or whatever. Just about um, giving it some breakup on the on the edges. So like if there would be some kind of seam. So now I'm masking out the area where I want the seam to be. And using uh, the, the layer brush for creating that seam so it sticks out a little bit further and the great thing about the layer brush is while you're drawing on your geometry it constantly stays on the same level so it's there's never an area which is um, you know m more intense than another one it's always const a constant stroke and now I'm refining it with a pinch brush to make it a little bit sharper because I want to get rid of the lumpiness in my in my sculpture and there I'm using the damp standard again to refining this hard edge again so that's what uh, damp standard is great for as well and then I'm gonna use the inflate brush to create uh, little wrinkles and creases to sell the idea that this is actual fabric so uh, the inflate brush in combination with the uh, lazy mouse uh, this is a great um, great function in ZBrush to create a, a constant uh, a flowing stroke it gives you way more control where your stroke is actually going to just press L the button L and then the lazy mouse is enabled so this already helps and now I created another primitive object with using a pant in the subtool palette to create this this basic element to give the idea of an earring and you can see with those minor elements like this shirt and those earrings it helps you already way more uh, getting the idea of that character now you feel way more that he is a aggressive uh, punk And then I simply combine those two primitives and uh, uh, scale them down a little bit and move them in the direction where they belong. Uh, so right here. Yeah, so that's it pretty much. Um, now we come to the final stage, which is um, getting rid of this... You know, you still see the, those squares and I, I really don't want them anymore in the in the face so um, I use the 
trim dynamic brush to break that shape up a little bit further and you can see how it, that gives you this great um, planar shape and uh, back again when you're um, trying to imagine sculpting with real clay in real world um, you you would never get a perfect smooth result or at least it's quite tough and I like this um, this look to it where it looks like it's still in progress and uh, but it's it's already a decent result so uh, that gives me the freedom to not put any pores in it and any super realistic wrinkles but give it a little a little bit more of an appealing look to it with this breakup brush and later on when the light hits this object it's gonna look way nicer as well with all the breakup uh, of the shapes and all those little planar um, uh, elements in it. Mostly um, done with the sculpting process so far. Um, it's just about. I mean, you can stop. You could actually stop right now, but uh, try to get this um, trim dynamic look on every area of my object. So, in case I would render that, it would look a little bit nicer. Um, because of the breakup of the of the lighting so just about getting rid of that really smooth look and giving giving it some more of an interesting shape uh, right now I'm using the damn standard again to create those uh, scars in the face. I mean you can see it's really cool for creating wrinkles and creases. So um, yeah and um, by adding adding those little creases you can also it can also help you uh, selling the shape and the flow of your character so you can see how I'm, how I'm constantly adding more and more little um, creases and areas where the shape goes along. I know I've said that a few times, but you can see it again. While I'm creating those wrinkles uh, and those creases, um, the appeal of it comes actually from sculpting asymmetrical. So, yeah, I hope you can see the benefit of that, even though it might take longer because you need to sculpt on both sides and not just on one. Yeah. But I think um, this is it. So in case you have any kind of questions regarding this tutorial or my workflow, feel free to write something in the comment section or contact me personally. And if you enjoyed this tutorial, um, please share, like and subscribe. And see you next time.